Ugh. So for the Iron Whale, there's only really two or three big speedrun tricks. The rest is just optimizing movement. Jump and break either these first two, and then both of these, or just this one. And to get through here, what I do is I hold left, uh, hit the block, and as I'm holding left, I jump, and that causes me to bonk against this one. Right here, hit this crab on the way down, and it's faster to continue yourself um, by breaking all of these, or you can use the crab. Uh, right here, I wait until after the screen transition, and then I do a full jump and delay a pogo on him, and that gets me over here. Do a full jump right here to get up here. And walk off this platform. Jump and reflect this, and then just walk. You can either pogo this guy or not pogo this guy. Uh, you can pogo both the fireballs uh, and the mage himself. In this room, it's just about optimizing movement and killing the tentacles. Uh, the tentacles are only vulnerable at the ends of them, where that black dot is. Uh, so what I want to do is jump and pogo this one, and then bonk the ceiling. And that just saves frames. If you don't hit the uh, eyeball part of the tentacle, as you can see you get pushed back like, uh, like that. Hold a pogo, then swing. For the next room, what I'm going to do is hold right, I'm going to swing my shovel after I lower a little bit, and then pogo, and that kills the first two. I'm going to take damage from the third tentacle and get damage boosted left. Then I'm going to pogo the end of that tentacle, um, and use my invincibility to walk on the spikes, kill the last tentacle with a shovel attack on the ground, and jump cancel it as soon as possible, and you have just enough invincibility to live. I messed it up, so I'm going to die and try again. <laughs> I have a highlight of this strategy as well, if you'd like to go check it out. Just for a quick reference. But I figure repeating this for a tutorial really isn't that big of a deal, since you get to see it twice. Okay, I'm not going to keep trying that because I don't have time to do that. Instead, I'll show you the backup strat. The backup strat, if you miss, is come down here, take damage, and then just continue the process. If you want to see the way the room is properly done, I have a separate highlight for it. So swing at this on the way down to save time. And then you can either pogo the treasure chest, which is unsafe because you can fall to your death, um, so I just recommend jumping on these platforms, and all this comes down to is predicting when he's going to shoot these little fish at you, um, and you can of course pogo the little fish to get to safety. And the fish takes 12 hits to kill, so you need to hit him three times, at least twice, during this first phase to one cycle him, or you'll kill him on the left, or the right rather. But it's completely dependent on his height on the screen, and unfortunately right now he's kind of too high for me to get the one cycle. So just do your best to kill him as quickly as possible. Take this health because it's the only good health available in this level. There is health later, but ideally we don't want it. For this Manta Ray, hold up right on this ladder to get damage boosted left. You have to. When you get to the spikes, jump, pogo him, go up here. Now for this room, you're going to jump off, uh, jump up, hit this dirt clod, and then pogo off of it to reach that ladder. You can, if you want to be safe, align yourself here and then perform the trick. What I like to do is just do it all in one go right off the ladder. Like that. Very hard to do, and something to note about practicing that is that you, if you want to practice just that, you have to reload the level. There's no way that that dirt clod is coming back. Even if you die, it's not coming back. Uh, for this missile room, you can make it past the first one, but don't. 
just wait because the missiles uh, tend to move randomly. Don't jump off the ladder, just walk off and you'll land on that platform every time. Walk here, the anchor will not hit you. Get around this corner, hit him, and then jump and pogo him. It's kind of hard to do, but again, practice. Wait till it lowers, get a hole in one. So I did get the first part of the anchor skip. Um, it is a pixel perfect jump, but it saves like four seconds. Or alternatively, which is Zulag pointed out to me yesterday, you can bonk your head twice and then jump. And it should work out just fine. For the next part of the anchor skip, I'm actually going to kill this mage before I explain the rest, and then reload the room. For this, for the way I do anchor skip, where I just jump over it, I line myself up with this platform right here, because as you see, it's the same width as Shovel Knight. Um, but just wait and do either, not a full jump, not a medium jump, but somewhere in between. Uh, jump off of the tip, the left tips of the anchors, but you do like a big jump, a short jump, and then a big jump, and you get over here. When you do get over here, um, approach these dirt blocks from the air, and try and break both of them at the same time just to save some time. So I'm going to die and try and show you the other ways you can do anchor skip. Uh, you can use the fireballs. The reason that I decided to not use the fireballs in runs is because the mage can either fly up or down, and that can change where the fireballs will go. So now he's flying up. So as you can see, if he flies up and you just continue doing the anchor skip normally, you can use the fireballs to just kind of give yourself some extra time, or maybe even save yourself. Um, I'll reload the room and try and get it if he goes down. If he goes down, um, what you want to do is jump as he shoots his first fireball. And then... Uh, jump as he shoots his first fireball and pogo off of the first, third, and fifth fireballs. But again, he didn't go down. And this is the reason why I don't like jumping off the fireballs, just because they're completely random. Or they aren't, but his position is. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't do that right. It's a very specific jump timing as well, to make it so that you do uh, get the fireballs to go to the right spot. But with practice, you can get it every time. And it's all based on personal preference as to what anchor skip you like to do. So at that time, I accidentally bounced off of the fourth one rather than the fifth. As you can see, uh, trying to do an anchor skip is kind of a hard process. So that time, I was a little too far to the right, but that's kind of how you want it to look. Um, I'll try and get this to look correct, at least correct by my standards, because I do want people to know how to do this correctly. That's just showing you that you can salvage it if you need to. Well, looks like I'm not going to get it today. I'll try one more time. He's not going to give it to me today. If you do want to see it done uh, the way I'm describing, Captain Drake did do this in the AGDQ 2015 run, um, so just go look at that. Hit here and here, and that causes this guy to fall. If you do need the health, there's health over here. I usually don't like to get it because it costs a lot of time to come over here and get it. That shouldn't have done damage to me. Just 
jump and trigger this with a pogo. And now we get to Treasure Knight. And Treasure Knight's the most dangerous boss of this category, in my opinion, because he has a lot of attacks that deal one whole heart. Um, and he also has that Whirlpool attack that can suck you in. If you get to the Whirlpool attack, and I'll show this off, but if you get to that attack, uh, just pogo him and hold toward whatever wall you're on. So if you're on the right wall, pogo and hold right, and you won't get sucked toward the uh, center. Um, if Treasure Knight goes up to the top of the screen, with good jumps, you can get up there and do rapid pogos on him. But don't kill him up there, because if you kill him at the top of the screen, he'll slowly float back down, and then the victory like animation and everything will not trigger until both of you are touching the ground. And right there, just gonna pause for a second and explain. But the reason he didn't hurt me is because, again, I was damaging him, so I'm allowed to pass through his hitbox. So as you can see, Whirlpool, and I'm pogoing him and not taking any damage. Ideally, you don't want to kill him like this because, again, you have to slowly float back down to the ground, but it's not that big of a deal. Uh, for this second dream, this is the hardest one to die in, just because of what you have to do. You need to stand on the left and get damage boosted right by the knight on the left. Run to the opposite side of the screen, get hit by this potion, hit this potion up, make sure it doesn't hit anything, take damage from it, and then either get killed by the other potion or the knights by stabs. And you can land under Shield Knight, but you don't have to. But just try and die as quickly as possible. 